Hi, this is Joe again with another review. For the sake of this video, we're going to be discussing the 1963 film Cleopatra, starring Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Byrne, and Rex Harrison. Of course, Cleopatra was one of the most expensive movies that was ever made, especially at that time. I mean, Cleopatra was made today in 2021. It'd probably be up there like with uh, you know, the Titanic money. I mean, that, that's how expensive this thing was. And this movie, plus, was another movie that was being filmed at the same time. Of course, Something's Gotta Give with Man and Mo. Those two films, were the only two films that was currently in production at the same time by 20th Century Fox. And both of them, because of the various delays and various amounts of money that was being spent on these two films, almost put 20th Century Fox came this close to putting 20th Century Fox out of business. I mean, that, I mean, that, I mean that, that's how much money they put these two films in. But the only difference between Cleopatra and Selling Sky to Give was that like at least Cleopatra actually was, no, it was it A completed, but B released to the public and made, I mean, it didn't make some money for 20th Century Fox, but they made, but they coughed up more money than, than they got in return for this film. And even though it did get some mediocre reviews because it was, uh, which I'm going to get into, the, mo the, the movie was over budget, it was overacted, and, and there was so many delays with this film, and it was just sucking money out of 20th Century Fox like crazy. And, you know, because of that, and because it got a lot of flack for that, the, the reviews of this movie and the length of this film. Man, as such that people gave gave it at the time. Man, even Rotten Tomatoes gave it like a sixty-two percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So, so it was fairly mediocre for a movie that should have been at least an hour shorter, uh, if not at least forty-five minutes shorter, uh, because because it's so long, it's so padded out, it's so stretched out, and and everything went into really the production value for this film. Uh, that's the problem with, with these epics. Is that the movie series put in so much money for the production value? Oh, well, look at this grand scale, and all the people involved in making this thing, and it just didn't. The movie just didn't work. Uh, so, every time you see it, my, my phone's going nuts. Um, because, like I said, like I just said, this movie is just, just over four hours long, but four hours are ten minutes long. Longer than any movie that could possibly think of. Even longer than Lawrence of Arabia, Gone with the Wind, Ten Commandments. This is longer than those movies. And the movie I mentioned was ten times much much more better than the Cleopatra is. Well, Cleopatra, for those who don't know, I saw it's Elizabeth Taylor as the title role as Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt, who falls in love with not one, but two Romans. And that's the problem with this movie, is with this love story. Uh, it is the fact actually the two of them have to speak so loud and to speak loud. Uh, it, it, it was so hyped it as the most famous love triangle in in history, and the problem was there was no love triangle. There was nothing. There was no love triangle. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm waiting for the love triangle to bit to happen in this film, and there was absolutely nothing going on. Um, well, there's nothing unusual going on with this love triangle. And I said, Little Matilda plays uh, Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt, and she negotiates a deal with Julius Caesar, who was played by Rex Harrison, which is another problem with this movie. Is that I like Rex Harrison as an actor. He's an Oscar winning actor. And the problem is, he's British. He's a British actor trying to play a woman. He, he doesn't he's not even speak with, with a with an Italian accent in this film. There's no Italian accent from, from Rex. He's not even attempting to speak with an Italian accent. He's speaking with a regular normal voice, British accent, and everything else. And, I mean, it doesn't work. I mean, it doesn't work. And, 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 and he said to my father, I can't believe that they hired Rex Harrison to play Julius Caesar. He's not even speaking Italian. <laughs> Not one woman in this movie is speaking speaking Italian in this movie, and you could say the same thing with Elizabeth Taylor, and all all the people who are supposed to be Egyptians in this film. They're not even speaking Egyptian. 
There's not one person who's speaking Egyptian. I mean, you have actors who are speaking with British accents. You have people speaking with American accents. You, you have uh, that's about every popular actor you can think of, except for the act, except for the native accents of the, the people who they're supposed to be playing in this film. I mean, I mean, I mean it's so it's, it's so ridiculous. It was, it was driving me crazy while watching this movie. And, and because the movie is so long, I mean, I mean, I noticed this thing that 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 they're all speaking with the old native uh, accents, and it's supposed to be playing people without those accents. I mean, there's not one British person in this whole movie, and they, and that's supposed to be, and they, and they speak with British accents, and I mean, it was. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, seriously? I mean, that that's what they hired to play these parts. I mean, I mean, it's ridiculous, and and that and then what makes what makes it worse is, is the fact that uh, that like I just mentioned earlier before I ran on this man is is that there's no love triangle. I mean, the happiness thing is a, is the most famous love triangle in, in history between Cleopatra, Julius Caesar, and Mark Antony, and there's no love triangle in this movie. There's nothing. Uh, because the, f the first half of the movie is really about the, the, the love story between Julius Caesar, who played Rex Harrison, and Cleopatra with Elizabeth Taylor. And that's, a, that's about the first half, a little more than half of the movie. And, and, and then you ha after when Caesar gets killed, then, then about, like, about three years later, that's when you, you know, a regret, a regret three, years, three years later, then you have the love story with Cleopatra moved on to Mark Antony. That's it. I mean, I mean, that, I mean you think that the Mark Antony and Cleopatra were, were, was having a love affair while Cleopatra was being was still married to Julius Caesar, and and that that wasn't shown in this movie. And I don't know if it happened. That, that's a problem with movies like this. Is that you don't know how accurate it is from, from reality. From, uh, when they make a movie based on, on real people. You don't know if if they if it really happened because naturally we weren't born then the time Cleopatra and Mark Antony Trinity we none of us were around then so you we really had to do really good research to get as accurate as humanly possible and who knows how accurate this thing really was I mean it was impossible just impossible to to know if, if the love affair if Cleopatra actually had a love affair with. Mark Antony at the time she was married to Julius Caesar, which is one of the main story subplots of this movie, but with the Roman Senate was like ticked off that Caesar married Cleopatra, and an Egyptian ceremony, not even a Roman ceremony, but an Egyptian ceremony, was ticked everybody. Oh, it's not, it's not legal. It's not legal here in Rome because it wasn't done here. It was an Egyptian ceremony. It was done in Egypt and not and not here in, in Rome. Uh, and I mean, it, it was it was. It was you know, real political bullshit stuff is going on. It's like real thing. It's like you know, they're picking on what Julius, what Julius Caesar did, like the Democrats would be picking on Donald Trump. I mean, that type of nitpicking stuff. Oh, he was not married here. He was married over there. So it doesn't really count. I mean, I mean, I mean come on. I mean, come on. They're doing like this. You know, I mean, I mean, sorry they had to do that. But, 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 but it was absolutely ridiculous. What the hell is going on? It's really pathetic. And, and uh, of course, that the whole coup happened with Brutus stabbing uh, Caesar, which he did, did show in this movie. And and of course, what happened was, of course, Mark Antony was, left Rome to be with, to be with Cleopatra. And of course, all the Romans were like ticked off with what Mark Antony is doing. And so that so the Romans are going into Egypt to, to fight Egypt that's because of what Mark Antony did. I mean, and because Mark Antony. They felt that Mark Anthony betrayed him and stuff. I mean, I mean, it is, it is complete, uh, completely ridiculous. And, and uh, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but, but but in the movie, it was absolutely ridiculous. All this stuff was going on. And, th and then what made it worse what was the fact that, you know, the whole, the whole the, 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 then they had a love affair with Mark Anthony and Cleopatra. Uh, and they never really got married, and it's almost like what happened with Romeo and Julia, where, where Caesar, and uh, not Caesar, uh, Mark Antony thought that Cleopatra had 
died because he was told that she and they had this big bow at the end of the movie and 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 there was a, uh, that that uh, Mark Anthony was told that Cleopatra had uh, ran off and it was a, it was implied that she was killed uh, of course but, but, but she wasn't and, and then Cleopatra was told that Mark Anthony had had died which also wasn't true so Mark Anthony went to her tomb because that's where she was hiding because the woman army was it was invading Egypt and and of course what happened was uh, she he stabbed he, he Mark Anthony actually stabs it's funny to spoil it, stabs himself and dies and while he's dying uh, uh, Cleopatra had, had a snake and had a snake bite her, which she didn't see because he had, she had put her arm into the, into like a little uh, basket where, where the snake was, and, and he didn't see the snake biting, biting Cleopatra, and of course the, the, the snake was poisonous and she died, and she, of course she died, so they had, so, so they pretty much killed, killed themselves. Uh, over each other, and, and that's how the movie ends with both of them finding out that both of them had died, uh, or the Roman army found out that they had died, and and, it's a, and they and they were upset that that Mark actually died, uh, and the Roman Roman emperor who took over from uh, Caesar was more upset that Mark actually died that he didn't get. He was more upset with the fact that he didn't kill Mark actually himself. That he, Mark actually committed suicide than than having a uh, you know, you know the king kill him and stuff, but but it was like a four hours of wasted time. I'm never going to get back. I mean, it was just a crappy movie, a movie that's not that great, and and uh, and of course, one of the things that came out about this movie is that Richard Byrne did actually have a, a love affair, and she and he eventually marries Elizabeth Taylor in real life, and the two of them fooling around with each other on the set. Which you can't blame because Little Bit Tail was, I think she was like 31 years old at the time, 31, 32 years old then, uh, at the time the movie came out. And she was drop dead gorgeous at, this time, at that time. And there was one scene where you, where you see practically her whole, whole biome, which was laying down you know, naked. They, they had a covering to cover up her real men. Uh, so she won't see, uh, because there was no nudity back then in 1963. Uh, and, and, but when you saw what, what, what a great body that, that, that Elizabeth Taylor had at that time before she got fat and on drugs and being an alcoholic and, and you know, later on in her life, particularly during the 80s. But but that time she, she still dropped that gorgeous and that and she and because of her looks and beauty, that's what made, made the movie. Uh, but and the production value is what also made the movie. But but the it was like over, it was like overacting in, the, in this film, and I, and I thought so that everybody was overacting in this film. I mean, by the way, you should also look for a small cameo by Carol O'Connor and Archie Bunker, eight years before before he played the most famous role as Archie, America's favorite bigot, Archie Bunker. And Carol O'Connor was in this was in this movie as well. I should I should point that out. He was a member of the uh, Roman Senate, so it's interesting to see him in this movie, uh, but. Other than that, this movie was not, Cleopatra was not that very good at all. I mean, if you have been little bit Taylor fans and you've never seen the movie before, great, you know, you know check it out. But, but it's like way, way too long to, to sit there and view it in one sitting. Uh, at least watch the whole movie in one sitting. It's just way too long, way too boring, way, way overacting, all that stuff. But all the production value is great. And I'm not knocking the production value. It says the acting is way over the top, and, and everybody was overacting this film. So that's my review of the movie Cleopatra. Please click on the video, please video, please subscribe to my channel, please forward this video on your Facebook pages, and check out all my reviews on my YouTube channel, uh, rallyc.com, it's on WDY, and uh, c.com, it's the homepage of the reviewer, Christine Moore, and please check out all those videos on this website. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.